come on. You just you you get hibachi and Frederick and you act like it's sweet. You could just go everywhere. Nah, we, we don't play that over here at WSA 9. Welcome to Open Mic. We like to start the show with a few stories or a hot take on a story you're not likely to see anywhere else. I'm from gorgeous Prince George's and now I spill the tea in DC so you know these jokes come from a place of love. If in fact that was something I was capable of. Let's start things off right here in Tenley Town where an ANC commissioner race is set to be decided by a coin flip. Tonight, a tied race for an elected position in DC that is still tied. No joke. This is for an advisory neighborhood commission seat that represents the campus of American University. And Casey Nolan found out that the number of votes cast here was, well, let's just say low, like really low. By the way, she means one write in vote a piece low. So the vote ended in a tie, a one to one tie between two American University students who presumably voted for themselves. That's right. History is being made by two people who most likely wrote their own names on a ballot. A coin flip is exactly the right way to settle this because they don't even deserve rock, paper, scissors. They are definitely not agreeing to mutual combat. Flipping a coin is what these two deserve. And you know what? Not just any coin. The dirtiest penny you can find. One with like, yeah, all that green oxidation on it. A coin so dingy they got to use a microscope to figure out if it was heads or tails. Somebody's going to be able to put elected official on their LinkedIn after doing next to nothing on the job to get the job. The ultimate resume flex. My friends, that is the American dream. Now, both of these kids are going places. Well, then again, one of them is going places. One of them is going to ANZ meetings. The other one is going back to class. Let's see where this coin flip thing takes us. May the odds be forever in your favor. And by the way, not the first monumental coin toss that happened in Tenley Town. We used to do it in St. Albans to decide who's going to hold open the movie theater door uh, for everybody to come in the back. We're staying in D.C. for the next story where the D.C. Council announced plans to vote on two bills next Tuesday that will make all WMATA buses operating in D.C. free. One measure would make all metro buses that originate in the District of Columbia free for riders. It would also allow buses to be in service on 12 major routes for 24 hours a day. Uh oh, uh oh, the X2 should already be free for everything you got to go through. But you already know how I feel about this. Free is my favorite word. This would be a major move that would help a lot of people. But to be fair, all you really need to ride a bus for free in D.C is confidence and commitment. They are clearly on the honor system now. So making it free just means folks can make eye contact with the driver when they walk right past them. It is pretty cool that DC is hoping to lay claim to being the first major city in America to do this. We'll see how the vote works out, but you know me, I'm always rooting for free. Let's head over to 8th Street Northeast for this next story where a man was caught on camera breaking into a Smoothie King and stealing drinks from a refrigerator. Here you see my man right here, notably with his scully on, although a very noteworthy jacket. You might want to dress more nondescript next time. And I don't know what ducking is supposed to do. I guess he didn't know exactly where the camera is, but you know what? You got to get that, you, you got to get that peanut butter smoothie somehow. Maybe, was, you think this is pre-workout or post-workout? He, I'm shocked that all he took was drinks. I mean, that wasn't even worth the effort it took to break the glass. You, you are in an establishment that collects money and he's just looking for nourishment. You know what? I, maybe that's honorable. You know, I've never been that thirsty. You, you can take that mess to 7-Eleven because they're always open. You don't even need to break things there. Just, just grab it and run. Let me clarify that crime is bad and I'm not giving a shoplifting tutorial. I'm simply pointing out how he could have done things more efficiently. Instead, your boy is and is on again, off again, Scully, or on the news. Now, what's hilarious, by the way, is that the side of the fridge says, grab something cold. And the dude like, well, don't mind if I do. Maybe he was outside and he saw it from the street like, oh, it's a sign. I will give this guy credit for being smart enough not to look directly into the camera. That's the only thing he did kind of right. And even that was wrong. So, uh, let's head to Kent, England for this last story where an artist named Sam Cox has covered his entire house in hand-painted doodles. I got in trouble for drawing on the walls. I had this dream of doodling over a whole house and living in the house. 
And now you bought your own house and so you can draw on all the walls. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Wow, I feel a kinship with him because, I mean, you know, as a kid and you said, I'm gonna buy my own house, I can do whatever I want. You know, I said when, when I'm growing up, I'm gonna spend all my money on candy and I actually did that. He's also living the dream. Sam said, take that mom, I got my own walls to tag now. This, by the way, is definitely not serial killer behavior, like at all. But if he likes it, you know what, I love it. This looks like the ghost of Keith Haring has returned with a severe case of OCD. Before y'all give me a hard time for these jokes, the man has a doodle suit. Y'all saw it. You thought we were just gonna let that ride? He went above and beyond the call for attention. I am just granting his wish, but I do admire the commitment it took to cover every inch of his house. I can't find the discipline to dust every inch of my house. Sam Cox, congratulations on illustrating your dream home. Enjoy your supervillain lair and try not to get dizzy walking from room to room. My favorite story today, it's got to be the ANC runoff coin flip, taking me back to my high school days of seeing two whole days of movies for free. And also because somebody is one hair to tails away from controlling their low stakes destiny. My daughter's favorite story, definitely the doodle house. So thanks a lot for putting ideas in her head.